What's the deal with camp counselors? Always complaining about the campers, but when I murder the campers, all the counselors do is scream. Don't worry, I'm not a prop comic. So I told the guy, how do you think I wound up in this mask in the first place? Thanks again, guys. I'm here every Friday. What am I doing with my life? Today, you are gonna learn all about how I built the scene you just watched with JSON prompting in VO3. And I'm gonna be sharing a new JSON prompt building tool that I used to create most of the source footage for that scene. Look, I understand. JSONs can be a bit intimidating to the uninitiated, but you don't need to feel that way. I couldn't code my way out of a paper bag, and I made a sizzle reel for a stand-up set by an axe murderer. The really cool thing about the new JSON builder I'm about to show you is that you can import not just text, but also images to influence the JSON you create. So what exactly are we going to cover? First, I'm going to go over the basics of what JSONs are, how they work, and why you might want to use them. Next, I'm going to cover this brand new JSON builder that's going to automate the entire process for you. And lastly, I want to cover some workflows and additional tools that you or anyone could use to bring a scene like this together like Voltron. So let's get started. Who's Jay and why do we care about his son? JavaScript object notation, in addition to being a phrase you won't remember, is a type of data formatting used for a lot of web app and server applications. It's handy because computers are good at reading and writing in the syntax of a JSON, but that syntax is still somewhat readable by humans, even the ones that don't speak robot. Seriously, this isn't code school, but I do want you to know about two of the key structures that make up that syntax. Braces and brackets. Braces surround objects and descriptive pairs like character and my cat Steve, or dialogue and why did you name me Steve? I'm a cat! You know, the cat's got a point. Wow. Brackets, on the other hand, surround arrays, which for our purposes are ordered lists of objects or events. For example, my cat Steve eats an apple, eats an orange, eats a pear. Don't worry about any of the other technical stuff right now. If you need to know it, you'll learn it when you do. Just remember, braces, objects, brackets, arrays. At the end of the day, JSONs are just a structure, like the 3.5 essay I had to write about the Iliad in middle school, or any movie script ever. So if we write our prompts in this format, are we communicating directly with the AI model? No. Sorry, Neo. The Matrix does not have you. There is definitively a spoon, and under no circumstances are you learning Kung Fu. But people are raving about these JSON things. Why are they so great? I think the main reason JSONs lead to better results is probably because we have all generally become pretty lazy prompters. And the structure forces us to be more thorough, to use more specifics, and to generally be more deliberate and ordered in our thinking. Turns out cinematic 4K trending on art station epic masterpiece is just nonsense word salad the model kind of ignores. Or in the case of VO3, apparently says, this is definitely about crystals. If you want to get a bit conspiratorial, and boy howdy do I, these models are the property of massive companies looking to do any and everything with AI. And that includes large language models. In the case of VO3, that means Gemini. And if there's one thing they're trying to get Gemini to do these days, it's learn how to code. I don't think it's surprising that an LLM trained on and rewarded for replicating code suddenly excels at interpreting information presented in a code-like syntax. I don't think they're doing any of this for the memes. Again, I don't know any of that, it's just a theory of mine. But hey, that's enough tinfoil headwear for now. Let's move on to this actual prompt builder. I don't know about you, but I'm not a large language model, so the fact that this builder does a lot of the code-adjacent heavy lifting is pretty good news. Before we start, I've got to credit the author of this amazing tool, Rich Klein. His socials are going to be below. You should click them and follow him. He creates and posts amazing content, including a ton of JSON prompts you can grab and tear apart if you like learning that way. He created the builder in Google's new Opal AI tool, which allows you to prompt your way into creating web apps. Opal is in beta, it's constantly being updated. So at any given moment, the builder can be a bit buggy, but I haven't had too many problems so far. 
If you get value out of this builder, go give Rich a shout out on Twitter. He's an AI stud. And I'd like to personally thank him for giving me access to the builder when he was still working on it. Aside from the link to the JSON builder in the description, the only other thing you'll need, or at least I would recommend, is some sort of text editor. I'll be using Notepad++, but any basic operating system default text editor or word processor will work. Hit start and you will learn that in JSON Builder, app prompt you. In this case for a scene type, is it a film, an animation, a local weather report? In this example, let's go back to basics and start with a 1980s horror film. Hit the next arrow and now we get our option to upload an image. I'm gonna use one from Mid Journey, but you could use whatever you want. Opal is gonna feed all this to the Gemini monster, combine it with the tool's system instructions, and then generate appropriate specifics for our finished JSON prompt. Next, it will ask for character information. If your scene is full of inanimate objects, I guess you could leave this blank. You could leave any of these fields blank. The builder will still use the information you do give it to come up with some sort of JSON. For our example scene, I'm gonna enter a dark and threatening man in a hockey mask and dark coveralls holding a large wooden handled ax over his shoulder. You know, just like the image we used. This next part can be a bit overwhelming as the builder is going to ask for all of our scene's overall details. The sample above will have all kinds of things, like lighting, audio, camera movement, style, but you could put anything in here. This is why I like to use a text editor in conjunction with the builder. It lets me organize all of my thoughts before I start building, and after the fact it gives me a base I can edit to generate variations on my JSON. And we'll look at an example of that in a bit too. The last input is going to be for dialogue, but I use this section for anything that needs to be sequenced in time. VO3 generates 8 second clips, and you can prompt when things happen by adding time direction. For example, start time, 0 seconds, end time, 2.5 seconds. The man in the hockey mask turns and speaks over his shoulder to the camera as he walks toward the horizon. You know, I've been thinking about buying a farm. It's kind of crazy this works, but you can add additional lines at later timestamps. For example, start time, 4 seconds, end time, 7 seconds. The man in the hockey mask says to the camera before turning to continue walking, You ever think about buying a farm? The builder is going to organize this dialogue and direction into an array, and hopefully VO3 is going to interpret it more or less correctly. Copy and paste your sequence direction and hit next one last time. The builder will tell you it's generating a VO prompt, which could take a minute, but eventually you should see a large white text box full of JSON goodness. Unfortunately, the copy button is an Opal update casualty, so you will need to manually select all of the text and hit Control C the old fashioned way. Some other problems include a non functioning mic input button, and sometimes if you leave it sitting for too long, the entire generation crashes and won't complete. So watch out for those bugs. Now you could copy and paste this JSON right into VO3 like I just did, but I would normally get it into a notepad first. That way you can save it for later or edit it directly to create different versions of the same base JSON. That's really all you need to know about the builder. It does all the JSON work for you. From here, you can make all the inputs you'd ever need, but if you want to get the most out of VO3 and JSON prompting, I would recommend some additional workflows and tool sets. Let's start with the 80s horror JSON we just generated. Sending that directly into VO3 gives us something like this. You know, I've been thinking about buying a farm. You ever think about buying a farm? Okay, that worked. But I like to lock down the look and character in image generation. So that's exactly what I do. You can totally JSON prompt with a start image. I like to use the same image I fed into the builder. This will give me a lot more generation consistency, but I can always go back to my notepad and change the timing of my dialogue and scene direction directly within the JSON. I think of the start frame as giving me control over how the scene looks, and the JSON is giving me control over the pacing. One thing I might like to check out in the future is if I can get maximum control of my shot's action with a diagram prompt, but one tutorial at a time. What a mook! <laughs> Let's say we want to dramatically change the style of our shot maybe to claymation. I recommend starting with the image, and for our purposes here, I'm gonna use Flux Context, but similar things can be done many places. ChatGPT, for example. I'll ask Context to change the style of my image to claymation, and there you go. Next, I'm gonna go to a template I use for all the categories the JSON Builder is gonna want inputs for, and I'll alter the relevant sections to lean more heavily into claymation and stop motion. All of that, plus the new image, gets fed into the JSON Builder just like before, 
And before I know it, I have a Claymation JSON. I have a start frame, a JSON, and VO3. And that means I get this. You know I've been thinking about buying a farm. You ever think about buying a farm? I tried anime. Then I went down a western rabbit hole. You ever think about buying a farm? That's fun, but I don't know if it's mustache on a hockey mask fun. The point is, now you have a lot of control over the look and timing combined with a really powerful video and dialogue generator. And that's how I wound up with an axe murder doing stand-up. I took my menacing fellow and context up some local comedians. I wrote some jokes and started generating JSONs. Comedy is about timing, so I had to edit the timing in the JSON a bunch. But keeping the rest of the JSON consistent meant I got pretty consistent reruns. Look at this example where I try and fit an entire joke into one eight second generation. What's the deal with camp counselors always complaining about the campers? But when I murder the campers, all they do is scream. Yeah, that's way too rushed. I started to stagger the dialogue and timing with overlap. First line, second line, third line. What's the deal with camp counselors? <laughs> Always complaining about the campers, but when I murder the campers... Second line, third line, fourth line. Always complaining about the campers, but when I murder the campers, all the counselors do is scream. <laughs> this overlap gave me a lot of flexibility in the editing. The possibilities are pretty endless when you can overlap the timing of your dialogue, action, and sound effects combined with consistent reruns. One thing you'll notice is that from shot to shot, sometimes character voices are consistent, and sometimes they aren't. For the stand-up scene, I used Eleven Labs to get around this. I just have the $5 baby starter plan on Eleven Labs. But even with that, I can go to the voice tab and apparently just select Burt Reynolds? Okay, that would be a different scene for sure. In this case, however, I'm going to select Create or Clone a Voice over in the top right, and then click Instant Voice Clone. This is only going to require 10 seconds of a voice sample to create a clone. Here's a trick. If you have a JSON and an image that are creating a consistent voice you like, edit the JSON dialogue to include more sample speech. I want you to take note of that. You can use your JSON not as a shot generator, but as a production technique. Like this. So I told the guy, how do you think I wound up in this mask in the first place? which makes for a pretty good voice sample if you wanted to train on it. I took that dialogue and duplicated it on one track. That gave me 16 seconds of voice sample to train on. Then you upload it right here. Now I added an audio cue to the JSON for the audience to stay silent, but there will be a toggle down below that you can click to remove background noise. Next, name your clone and select any of the available labels you think will help Eleven Labs out. Add a description and click the box swearing this isn't Burt Reynolds or anyone else famous. Then tell it to go. Now from the sidebar on the left, you can select Voice Changer. Upload your source video with the incorrect voice and select the voice clone you just made from the dropdown on the right. I'm gonna select Remove Background Noise and for your use case, you can mouse over all the settings and get an idea of what you could adjust. I found that can take a bit of trial and error. Hit Generate and it should do its thing in short order. Now just download the track and load it into whatever tool you are using to edit. Just like that, same lines, new voice. Always complaining about the campers, but when I murder the campers, all the counselors do is scream. One of the things that will sell this effect is overlapping the edits with different camera angles and sound effects. In my case for this scene, that meant shots and audio from the audience. And I didn't generate those with JSON. Don't be afraid to use some basic prompts for B-roll like this, whatever gets the job done. I use Udio for the music, there are lots of places to generate tunes, Eleven Labs just added it. I'm no AI composer, so just go with whatever you're comfortable with. It's time we address the 500 ton elephant in the room. VO3 is expensive. The most usable plan is 250 bucks a month. The other plan available is $20, but it only gives you 50 generations a month with VO3 fast. Neither of these options feels great. In theory, there are some solutions that don't break the bank, but they are limited at best. I showed you Flux Context in Kria a little bit ago. Kria is an aggregator of many companies' AI tools, and there are several different, comparatively reasonable pricing plans available. In Kria, you can access multiple different image generation models, multiple different image editing models, multiple different video models, including VO3. But Kria won't work with JSON prompting. 
for the dumbest reason possible. The prompt box has a very small character limit of around 1800. JSONs are just bigger than that normally. That's such a dumb way for this not to work. Kriya, you were so close to getting a recommendation for this. Freepik, on the other hand, is a similar service. It has multiple image and editing models. It has multiple video models. It has no character limit for prompt inputs. But the number of VO3 fast generations you can get per month is pretty terrible. The $250 plan gets you 46 videos. Korea at least gets you 53 for 60 bucks. I guess that's not terrible, but again, the character limit. <laughs> yeah, this kind of sucks. <laughs> VO3 direct from Google Flow, 50 videos a month for 20 bucks. It still just feels gross. Who are the ad wizards that came up with this one? There's no way to sugarcoat this. VO3 fast is expensive. I think kind of too expensive, and the lack of any sort of middle Goldilocks tier just seems so silly. If there was a 3k credit per month plan for 70 bucks, I wouldn't love it, but it wouldn't feel quite as dirty as the available options. Here's a pro tip, when in doubt, end your video on a downer. Look, there are other video models. You can hack parts of a JSON up and try and fit them in limited character windows. That might work. It might not. You could get multiple Gmails and set up two or three standard accounts? You could let me know in the comments below any workaround you have found outside of giving Google three grand a year, because no doubt this is a really good model. At the end of the day, all of these tools will keep advancing. So the workflows and concepts, like prompting with a structured JSON, are the things that you can carry forward from one advancement to the next. Use this JSON builder. Add it to your current workflows. Cook experiment, cook some more. If you have access to VO3, I highly encourage you to try out JSON prompting. It's gonna make you a better prompter all around. And the builder tool I showed you in this video takes a complicated and intimidating process and makes it really straightforward. There are social media links below. You can praise or attack me there. I'll pretty much take any kind of engagement at this point. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. That really helps a small channel like mine a ton. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Oh, my hand's on fire. What's happening?